Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to the FaithBridge Sermon Podcast. I'm Tyler Riley here with Timothy Atik, Executive Director at Breakaway, who just gave another sermon in the Devil Wears series. Today was the Devil Wears Truth. So, T.A., thanks for being with us yeah. here today. Always love being here. Yeah. Well, with it, I mean, we, of course, have some questions that some people have submitted, so I figured we could just jump right into it. Great. Let's do it. Awesome. So the first question says this. It says, I try to read the Bible, but struggle to understand what it's saying at times. Is there any book that you would recommend to help us in interpretation? Yeah, well, um, let me say first, before I recommend a book, let me just point you to community, just as Pastor Ken emphasized at the end of the and at the end of the service today, one of the best things you can do is get around other believers who are seeking to, to know the word and understand it and process the word of God in the context of community. That will be a huge help for sure. Um, a book that I think is um, incredible was written by one of my seminary professors. It's written by a guy named Howard Hendricks, and the book is just called Living by the Book. And so it's an old book, but it is a great book on how to how to study the Bible. That's awesome. Well, the second question uh, says, can you please name the organization slash church who's created their own translation? Yeah, I'm glad you're interested. I'm actually not going to name it just because the, the goal of the message wasn't to, to really take a shot at people and, and call out names. The goal of the message was just to, to encourage people to be discerning. And so I would encourage you, uh, honestly, um, any translation of the Bible that you're going to use, go research it. That's a good thing to do. One of the things I don't want to do is, is just give people my answer to things. And so I'd, I'd encourage you to go out and do research on some of the more popular translations that are out today. And, and I'm, you'll, you'll probably come across it uh, soon enough. So sorry, I won't, I won't name it uh, to, to everyone, but um, that will, that's not my goal is to, to kind of pick people off, but to just help equip you guys to be able to discern what's true and what's not. Yeah. Well, this one says, so the question still remains man's interpretation. The Bible is God breathed, but man's interpretation has divided us into so many denominations. If the gospel is central and they share that piece, but yet differ on doctrine, does it matter? He goes on to name um, different types of things, one even talking about slavery, and then he ends with, again, not about the gospel, but other views and rules that set the boundaries of our church. Yeah, good. Well, um, this is one of the reasons I love FaithBridge is because FaithBridge, in their doctrinal statement that they've put online, has been really good about um, differentiating between convictions and persuasions. And so the convictions are kind of like, this is non-negotiable. We will die on these hills. And then there's other things that are more secondary that the, the church feels strongly about, but could sit at a table with people who might not share the same belief and it'll be okay. And we would all respect each other as, as followers of, of Jesus Christ. I think, you know, in the question they clarified, you know, the, the clarification was kind of like assuming that we're on the same page about the gospel. I'll just say for me, when it comes to convictions, it, it has to do with you know, the authority, the inerrancy of Scripture, the deity of Christ, the, the triune Godhead, the depravity of man, um, salvation by grace uh, through faith. Th those are kind of the big ones for me. And if we're not on the same page about those things, those are hills that I would die on. And I think that those are hills that, um, that uh, Faith Bridge would die on. And then when it gets to secondary issues, now I would say slavery is not a secondary issue. That You can look at slavery and say there was a misunderstanding of Genesis 1 that all mankind has been created in the image of God. That was, that was just a sinful, that is a sinful, that's an issue of sin, that's not a secondary issue. But you get into some of these other, other issues that uh, are more secondary um, and very important 
But the goal there is to go and study your brains out and go explore and examine and figure out where you stand, but knowing that your salvation doesn't hinge on it, your ability to love other people in the faith that might differ, differ that your ability to love them doesn't, doesn't hinge on that either. Well, last question here. Uh, it says this, it says, I enjoyed the depth of your message today. These are questions I have often had for myself. In reference to baptism and salvation, what would you say about the verse Mark 16, 16 through 18, especially since this is supposed to be Jesus speaking? And I may be wrong, but the verses you referenced were all apostles speaking. I know we should be able to take all the verses into account. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, great question. And I would, I would just say that the apostles' teaching is very important because Jesus sent them out to speak on his behalf. So Jesus had his ministry, then he left and he said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit that you are basically going to go out and do greater works than I've done. That basically his ministry has become their ministry. And here's the good news is that Jesus and the apostles are not uh, at odds when it comes when it comes to baptism. The, the, the hard thing is that uh, there's times when people want to build a a doctrine off of a few isolated verses. Um, and so for me, this is just me speaking personally, but the way that I try and operate is I don't try and build any major doctrine off of a few isolated in, uh, verses. What I want to do is I want to take what the scripture is saying from start to finish and always investigate difficult passages in light of the overall context. And so when you read uh, really all of the New Testament, what you would see is, I mean, you look at the book of John, what word do you see over 80 times you see the word believe? I mean, the majority of the New Testament is pointing toward uh, faith in Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. So where does baptism come into play on verses like uh, Mark 16? Um, I, I do think that it is important to realize that faith and baptism always should go hand in hand. That when you have faith, you should have baptism. But it's not faith and baptism to be saved. It's that when you have faith, the natural next step is baptism. So you look in Acts chapter 8, and you see the Ethiopian eunuch, he believes, and his next question is, why can't I get baptized? And they're like, great, let's do it. And they stop right there, and they baptize him right then and there. So that that's my personal stance when it comes to baptism, that I'm viewing things in light of, of the whole scripture. Um, and on those tricky verses like that, I would say that I don't think that it, they don't rattle me because I'm like, yeah, where there is faith, there should be baptism. And I think that we have done a poor job of letting there be separation that, you know, people can delay. And so you have people have been believers for years and they still haven't been baptized. So yeah. that, that's where I would land yeah. on that. Well, that's all the questions that yeah, we have. Great. Thanks for being with us today. It's always good to have you back. Yeah, thanks. Always and good to be here. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.